I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I find buying MacBooks just as difficult as you, particularly when it comes to MacBook Pros. However, I think I've worked out how to buy the right M2 MacBook Pro. So when I buy a MacBook Pro, I'm always worried that I'm either over-specking it or under-specking it. And we've reached that stage of the year, quite early for Apple, where we have new MacBook Pros to choose from. These are the new M2 MacBook Pros, either the M2 Pro or the M2 Max version. Now this video isn't designed to help you choose between the 14-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's for a different guide. But today, I'm going to help you choose between those two chips. So which one out of the M2 Pro and the M2 Max is right for you. Let's find out. When choosing between the M2 Pro and the M2 Max MacBook Pro, there are five things to think about. We'll start with pricing, as always, and I do have to refer to this stuff, guys. Sorry, there's so many numbers, I want to get them right. So the M2 Pro MacBook Pro in the UK starts at £2,149 for the 14-inch version. And the most you can spend on an M2 Pro 14-inch MacBook Pro without breaking into the M2 Max territory, so if you add everything onto it, apart from upgrading to the M2 Max is £5,299. If you jump up to the M2 Max for the 14-inch MacBook Pro, it starts at £3,349, and the most you can spend on an M2 Max 14-inch MacBook Pro is £6,549. Next up, we have the CPU, and the base model M2 Pro chip has 10 cores. You can upgrade that to 12-core if you want to, whereas the M2 Max only comes with a 12-core CPU. The GPU is where you see the biggest difference between these two chips. So the M2 Pro starts with 16 cores and can go up to 19 cores, whereas the M2 Max starts at 30 cores and goes right up to 38 cores. The M2 Max also has a more powerful media engine than the M2 Pro and can support up to four external displays versus the two supported by the M2 Pro. So there are some huge differences between the M2 Pro and the M2 Max MacBook Pro when it comes to graphics, and initial tests from some other reviewers who have actually got these machines and have tested them suggests that the M2 Max is seriously more performant when it comes to graphics work than the M2 Pro. I'll be testing that myself when I get my M2 Max 14-inch MacBook Pro in a week or so, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss that. Moving on to unified memory, the M2 Pro chip starts at 16 gigabytes and can be upgraded to 32. The M2 Max, on the other hand, starts at 32 gigabytes and you can upgrade to either 64 or 96 gigabytes if you need that much memory. Although it is worth bearing in mind that that 96 6 gigabyte option is only available if you go for the specced up M2 Max with the 38 core GPU. When it comes to the speed of the memory, the M2 Pro is 200 gigabytes per second, whereas the M2 Max doubles that to 400 gigabytes per second. Storage is quite simple. Basically, the M2 Pro starts at 512 gigabytes, the M2 Max starts at one terabyte, and both of them can be maxed out at a ludicrous eight terabytes of internal storage. However, I am aware that I've just bombarded you with loads of figures and numbers, and I know those are all important, but what's more important is which one is for you, the M2 Pro or the M2 Max MacBook Pro. Let's work it out. Although Tim will never share with us the exact sales figures for the M1 Pro versus M2 Max MacBook Pros, I think it's a safe bet that the M1 Pro version was the biggest seller. And that isn't just because of the price, although that's gonna be quite a big factor. It's because that M1 Pro MacBook Pro is such a good computer. And as a result of that, it was just far more capable for a much wider audience. And the good news is that it's the same story with the M2 Pro versus M2 Max debate, which makes my life and your life much easier. The unified memory is a great case in point. So I've always said that if you know you need more memory, you know you need more memory. So if you know that you need 64 gig or 96 gig, you know that you need the M2 Max MacBook Pro. For most other people, the 32 gigabyte limit of the M2 Pro is absolutely fine. And if we look at the pricing, in the UK, it costs 1200 pounds to go from the M2 Pro MacBook Pro to the M2 Max MacBook Pro. And for that, you get two more CPU cores, 14 more GPU cores, and both the internal storage 
and the unified memory are doubled. But is that lot worth 1200 quid? Well, the CPU cores, those two different cores between the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, you won't notice. That added memory is nice, but even 32 gigabytes is too much for a lot of people. In the world of Apple Silicon, and I say this having used it day in, day out for nearly two and a half years, 16 gigabytes of Apple Silicon memory is very different to 16 gigabytes of the Intel days. As for storage, that is the one thing you can add to as you start using your MacBook Pro. A case in point, I only edit these videos off external SSDs. And the fact that you can now have either 16 or 19 cores of GPU on your M2 Pro MacBook Pro, it just means that this laptop is the best thing for, yeah, you guessed it, most people. So that leaves us with one more question, which is who on earth is the M2 Max MacBook Pro for? Firstly, if you need 64 gigabytes or 96 gigabytes of unified memory, the M2 Max MacBook Pro is for you. You can stop watching this video now and go and buy it. If you don't need that much memory, there is another reason the M2 Max might be for you. I'm eagerly awaiting a 14 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro and it's gonna replace my old, old, decrepit M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. I'm going for the 14 inch for, well, for reasons that relate to my back. I don't wanna carry this thing around anymore. It's just too big, but that's by the by. The reason I'm sticking with the M2 Max is because when I went with the M1 Max in this, it significantly improved my video workflow. It enabled me to render and export these YouTube videos much, much quicker than my M1 Mac Mini. Will the 38 core version be any quicker? Well, that that's what I can't wait to find out. Again, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out in a couple of weeks. And this completely sums up the M2 Max MacBook Pro. If, like me, you're a video editor, or perhaps you're a 3D graphics person, or you do something with imagery where it's tied to income, and the quicker you can do that stuff, the quicker you get paid, and the quicker you get work out, then the M2 Max MacBook Pro is a solid investment. That laptop is so heavily graphics focused that it is clearly for people for who every single second counts. But I do think that is an incredibly tiny market. So if you're watching this thinking, I'm in that market, that is me, then fantastic. Trust me, it will be the best investment you make in your business. But if you're sitting there thinking, does it really matter if I shave a few seconds off an export or a little bit of time off a render, then the M2 Max isn't for you. And that's no bad thing. You'll save yourself some money. I love it when I can draw a very simple conclusion from an Apple purchasing decision. The M2 Pro MacBook Pro is for everyone apart from the most graphics intensive users and people who need either 64 or 96 gigabytes of unified memory. If you're not one of those people, the M2 Pro MacBook Pro is for you. If you do lots of very intensive graphical or video work and it's tied to income, the M2 Max is the laptop for you. Let me know in the comments though, which one are you going for. And don't forget, there is another option now. If you don't really need portability, so if your MacBook Pro is going to spend most of its life or all of its life on a desk, then the M2 Mac Mini, and specifically the M2 Pro Mac Mini, could be a very sensible investment. Keep watching for my buying guide for the M2 Mac Mini.